All right, so we've got this account that we've created. And uh, what we need to do is, well, we need to get followers. Just like on Twitter, every network uh, has some way to get followers and such. And the more followers I get, potentially then, could lead to results, could lead to conversions. So I want to build followers here, just like every network. We'll see the nuances, the nuances of Pinterest. Go ahead and click on uh, or hover over your icon on the top right corner and then select My Profile. This will take you to your profile. This is what people will see. Notice your address is listed at the top there, pinterest.com slash whatever that address is. And there's not a lot of customization you can do on a Pinterest profile. They're all basically going to have this white background and your logo. It's up to you to write some text. Notice I added a link to my description, but it's not active. Perhaps they'll activate it at some point, but at the moment you don't, you don't have active links in your biography. Uh, in contrast to Twitter, when you write your Twitter biography, you can write addresses also in your Twitter biography. Pinterest, it looks like, it assumes that you're going to put your web address in the spot that it asked for an address. That one is an active link. Um, so the bio is just text. But those keywords could help you get found when people search. I've got nothing here. My stats show zero boards, zero pins, zero likes, followers, and I'm following five. So this is where you can go back to see who you followed to then unfollow. You go back to your profile, and if you look at this briefly, I, I can click on following. Those are those five topics that I chose to follow in the onboarding process. And so I've followed these topics. If you no longer want to follow these topics, just click unfollow. The point of this, just like we talked about on the other networks, you still want your business to follow other businesses or other accounts at the very least for inspiration and possibly to check up on trends. So you can follow as many topics or uh, accounts as you'd like. You can unfollow them as well. Be aware, of course, that when you follow an account, they will get notified. So if you're following your competition, your competition will get the notification that says, Victor's Bakery followed you. So as I said previously, the answer to that is follow other businesses but that are not your direct competitors. <coughs> I'm a bakery, but I'm not going to follow the bakery in the same town. I'm going to follow the bakery in the next county, maybe, or the next uh, state. Follow a competitor, but not a direct competitor. And we can start adding pins. We can start sharing stuff to Pinterest right away. What I'm going to recommend early on is to think about what content you'll be sharing. Uh, perhaps over on the other networks it may be organic and that you have an idea and I'll share something. But here I would highly recommend on Pinterest to have a little bit more of an idea uh, of goals of what you're going to share because you can organize via boards here. So let's do this. Under the boards screen, let's create a board. These are basically topics. These are like folders to organize your content. It needs a name, description, and other things that we'll look at. So let's say I'm, a, I'm this bakery. So I could be sharing cookies. I'm going to type cookies before I type simply cookies. Notice suggestions. Places to grow, recipes to make. This could have easily be called, if I was a travel agency, I mean a, yeah, a travel agency, I could have called it places. But it's telling me here in a more active voice, places to go. I'm this bakery, and I was going to type cookies or recipes. But it's saying, why not call it recipes to make? Why not be active? Because that, again, ties into search. People are going to be searching on Pinterest. So if I have a, a board called DIY kid-friendly recipes, now I'm, gonna, I'm not just throwing keywords out there for fun. I'm putting keywords there as an idea of what people could be searching for. That's what I'm saying about an, 
you need an idea of what you're going to share. And this can be changed whenever you want, as often as you want. But you should know your business. If you take the uh, SEO class in there, we spent some time talking about briefly about a, uh, a company profile and a marketing strategy. So you could use social media pretty effectively without too much of a strategy or, or goals. But you'll probably get better results with goals and strategies. So one simple thing here is creating boards, creating organizational units with keywords uh, of what people might be searching for. Because my idea is I'm a bakery and I'm trying to sell cupcakes, but I'm going to give away a version of a cupcake recipe, or I'm going to give away these great photos of these cupcakes, or I'm going to try to generate interest um, by the content that I share. DIY kid-friendly recipe sounds good. Description, what's your board about? Uh, let's see, do we have a limit on this thing? I suppose we can write a lot, uh, but I wouldn't go overboard really. A couple of sentences, one sentence is fine. Again, a keyword-rich sort of sentence. A sentence that has perhaps what people are searching for, not simply a list of keywords, but real human readable words and sentences. So I'm going to say here, um, sharing the best um, and healthy kid-friendly recipes for your family. Tasty alternatives to the sugary stuff. This is optional, of course, but if you are detailed here and specific, look at these keywords. Tasty alternatives, alternative to sugar, kid-friendly, healthy, recipe. Those are keywords that people are going to search for. And I'm writing them in an organic way. I'm writing them in a way that people would be searching for. category. Lots to choose from, but these basically are the different ideas when we were looking at the search, remember when we were looking at the search topics. Uh, so there's DIY and crafts. There's food and drink. I searched under the food and drink category, and I'm going to put my stuff there because other people are searching there as well. I can have secret boards. Only I can see them. But most likely you're going to run this pretty publicly to try to get as many followers and views as possible. Question? If you do have a secret board that you share with another person and they're going to create it, can you make it private on your page to get your you know, viewers or your followers on the screen? I'm not exactly sure because honestly I don't use them very much for clients because we want to have this as public as possible to try to get more views out of them and, and followers. I'm taking a quick look at the at the help here because it says learn more. Let's see what it says. You can make a secret board public or vice versa. Currently the ability to switch a board from public to secret is only available to the Pinterest app. Only the secret board owner can make the board public. Yes. So there are some limitations there. It, it's up to the owner. Only you and whoever you invite can see the pins there. Then we've got collaborators. So whereas over on uh, Facebook or Pinterest we can have managers, we can have more than one person manage the Facebook or Google+. Plus. Um, the closest thing here is that we can have collaborators to a board. It's not that different people are going to use the Victor's Bakery Pinterest account. It's that different people are going to collaborate or share to the same board. 
So you would need to add their names or emails, and yes, that assumes they have a Pinterest account as well. So I'm going to add the other people on the team to be able to post to that board. I suppose in theory you could give everyone in the team the email to access this account, but Pinterest doesn't really have it set up that way or doesn't really want us to do it that way. And I would perhaps dissuade you from doing it that way because now you're giving this login and password to multiple people. How well do you know the person and their cybersecurity credentials? You know, they may connect to public Wi Fi at Starbucks and that could cause you to be in danger if they're logging into the main account that way and you gave away that address. So collaborators is their way to have more people share to the same board. I'm going to create. Once you do that, it will take you to that board. There's your description. This is who created it. Invite more people to add to it. Right now only you can add to it. On the right side we have edit, so we can go back to edit it or delete it, not more, send the board, share on Facebook, make a widget. So this board has a specific address on Pinterest. That address is shareable. I can share it via email, I can put it on Facebook, but notice from more here we can say let's send this board to our Facebook. So people on your Facebook would see this board. If I make a widget, that's basically uh, this is the code, and I can customize this. This is the board, this is which board, this is the code. I take that code um, and I add that to my site, and it will then show up on my site. Although it's a little bit more of a setup because it's also asking you to do this. It's not as friendly as it could be. It does require that you know a little bit about copying and pasting and editing a little bit of code. But this board exists. I will go back to my profile. So hover over your icon and go back to profile. And I've got one board. Some notes here recommendations. Create as many boards as you think you'll need. Create boards on various topics directly related and or ancillary. Meaning, okay, I'm a bakery and I created that one about kid-friendly recipes. I could create one about um, holidays. So I could create a board called Halloween Fair or Halloween Goodies and I'm going to share stuff regarding Halloween. Even more tangential, I could create a board about ingredients. Maybe my company, we sell baked goods, but our big thing about our company is that we focus on healthy alternatives. So instead of using refined sugar, we're using, I don't know, uh, turbinado sugar. Instead of uh, plain old white flour, we're using arrowroot powder. So I could create a board called healthy, uh, or I could call it uh, alternative ingredients. So the point is, create different boards with different topics. They may be directly related to your products or tangentially related. I could say also... Um, Okay, as a beginner, in the beginning, at least three boards, at least four pins, 
per board. Because we're seeing that when we've got a board created, it will show four previews of pictures. One picture which you can which you can change, of course, will be the big hero image, the big nice looking image, and then three smaller ones. You can have as many pins per board, but it'll show four previews. You can choose which one to show as the top image. So I would recommend add at least four pins to a board. We'll see how it evolves. So that you don't have empty boxes here, empty spaces. Um, we've talked about how you want your account to look professional, enticing, um, complete. You're trying to convince people to follow you. If I don't have my biography written, if I don't have my company logo, perhaps you're you're not enticing people to, to follow you. If you've got a bunch of boards, but you've got one thing on each board, that's telling people, well, you're not that serious. You're not sharing very much. You thought of a lot of ideas, but you're not sharing much. Why would I follow that board? There's one thing there. So at least four will have this filled up, and they may or may not see the number here that you've only got four. But at least they're seeing, OK, you're trying. You've got stuff. You've got content that entices me to follow because you can get your whole account followed or just an individual board. So I'll create another board. I'm not going to create all of them, but let's say one more. I want to create one more board. So I've got right here, create board, or at the bottom, secret boards. I want one more board. This one is going to be baking with alternative ingredients. Thinking about what people are searching for. So I'll say something like, tired of using the same old unhealthy ingredients. Try these healthier alternatives for something different. So people could be searching for healthier alternatives, recipes for healthier alternatives. Try these healthier alternative recipes, unhealthy ingredients, keywords. This is another food board, but I'm saying it might help you to try different topics here as well. Maybe this can go under health instead of simply also food. There's nothing wrong about that. And that could get me the people that are searching under the help, uh, under the health topics. I might get crowded out over on food, but I might get a different sort of clientele or viewers out of health. I'll create that. And again, as I'm saying here, at least three boards, four pins each, so at least eight things that I need to share relatively early on to Pinterest. I'll back up back to my profile. So I've got two boards so far. I won't add more, but you get the idea. You want to create boards as many as you want. But if you are going to create multiple boards, remember, you're going to need to do multiple work. If I've created seven boards, you need to, you're need you going to need to populate each one of them with at least four pictures. 28 things that you need to share. Okay, so I've got boards. Pretty straightforward concept. Any questions on boards so far? All right, we want to populate these boards. We want to put something into these boards. Now we're going to share something to Pinterest. So we'll, we'll do it both of these ways. Uh, first, on the top right corner, hover over the plus symbol to add something. First, we'll do the not the best way, but we'll see how that works and then how to make it better. And then we'll look at the better way. But we'll select Upload from Computer. Again, I'm using a testing account. You probably don't have pictures of your real products that you're going to share right now. And you can delete these. But just to show you how this works, 
I'm selecting to upload a picture from my computer. And if you've got the app on your device, you have the ability from your phone to share directly your content. So if you're at the shop, you've got your product, take a good photo of your product, and then share it directly to Pinterest via the app. I'm going to choose an image, and we've got a few sample images if you'd like to, to use. On the left pane here, if you scroll up to the top, you will see pictures. We've got some sample pictures that we can borrow. None of these probably relate to your company, but at least we'll see how this works. Pictures, sample pictures. And I'll select the hydrangeas. The picture that I uploaded was a rectangular picture, and remember the Pinterest blog was recommending vertical pictures. Obviously it'll take any kind of picture, but Pinterest is saying vertical pictures work really well on Pinterest. That's the style and the character of Pinterest. And this screen is always uh, kind of twitchy in that, be careful here, I'm about to upload something and I want to put it into the baking as alternative ingredients. I'm not going to click on that yet. As soon as you click a board, it will, it will share it, so don't click the board yet. You want to first add the description and then select a board. And notice we can create a board on the spot. Let's say I got an idea at this moment. Let's say I looked at all my pictures that I've been collecting and I'm starting to think, well, this would be a good kind of board to create at this point. I can create one at this point. But don't create a don't click board yet until you've written the description here. There's no limit here really to how much you can write. You're not limited like the length of a tweet. This can go on and on and on. Don't make this a huge amount of text because people are mostly here on Pinterest for the pictures. Something visual. So this essay that you're writing here might not really help you. Yes. No. No, what I did was I clicked on the plus button on the top right corner and I selected upload from computer. Right now I'm sharing one of my pictures. Yeah, and like I said, we're first going to do the not the best way, okay. and then we're going to do the best way. So I'm uploading something directly from my computer, and I have a spot here to give a description, which I can write as much as I want, but I should keep it rather short. But what I want to do here again is describe what this is, and let's just imagine that this is one of my alternative ingredients. So I'm going to say here that this is a uh, uh, baking a pie with this ingredient. Ingredient is uh, better than plain flour. And this is okay, but I have the space to write a little bit more because this is what will appear. This is what will help me appear when people search. And I could put hashtags here if I want, such as cooking baking. You can do hashtags like Twitter. And the point of that is that that will become an active link. People click that, it'll show more pins with this topic. Um, what you can also do here is add links. So let's say, I'm also saying uh, we sell our version of this ingredient check out our shop and then a link so I have to manually add a link here I could copy and paste my link from my website but let's let's say I've got victorsbakery.com uh, shop or uh, ingredient one HTML whatever I have a link that I got from my website I'm adding it there. Fake link, obviously. But I've got a link, and this will become an active link, as we will see in a moment. 
that I have the space to write the description and hashtags and links. And we're seeing that this method is pretty straightforward. Choose a picture, upload it, give it a description, and then well, where are we organizing it? We have to put our pins into some sort of board. So at the moment, the alternative ingredient board is the proper one, but I can make one if I don't have one. So I'll select pin it. You're going to see here you've uploaded this. You may get a suggestion. It's going to go away in a moment, but it's, you're going to get a, subje a, a suggestion and Pinterest because it's, it's kind of smart as we'll see. It kind of knows a lot about what you're sharing. And it gave me a suggestion at, at that point about my, maybe see this also. It went away. It'll show up every time we pin something. We'll see why that might be valuable. But I've shared something. It's been pinned to this board. It's the only thing there, so it shows it up here. And again, I want to add at least four so that it doesn't look empty, like I'm not serious. I can edit. I can click the board. People will uh, see what's in here. There's what I wrote. And this is what I'm saying about Pinterest being pretty smart. I shared this, and so have 2,000 other people. 201 likes. That's not meaning that my particular one has 201 likes. Pinterest has seen this picture and analyzed it. Yes. Did anybody take a break and leave their car and house key downstairs? If not, I need a new car. Yes. <laughs> but if nobody claims them, then we can work out a deal. <laughs> no? Okay. So Pinterest uh, accepted this picture, analyzed the picture saw its file name, its file size and dimensions, and all of the metadata of this picture, and saw that this picture already exists on Pinterest. And it's already been shared on Pinterest 2,000 times with 200 likes. I don't really say this for anything good or bad. I'm just telling you, Pinterest is smart to some degree. And so what you've shared has already been shared before. Uh, I wouldn't really say that's good or bad, just a, a notice. And so if I back up to um, my profile again, that's what I've shared so far. When I'm in a board, I also have the ability to share directly to it, but uh, just for practice, I'm going to share... Well, we'll share the other way in just a moment, but let me show you why, why I'm getting at this. This is not the best way. If I were over on uh, looking over at um, food and drink. And we'll go into detail with this later, but let's say I see someone's post and I like it. What I could do is I could choose to pin it myself and that's like me doing a share or a retweet to anyone else's pins, I can also pin it. I can also share it. I can also reshare it. I can retweet it. Anyone else's pins. So let's say here, skinny taco chicken chili. If I click pin on that, it'll pop up and it'll say, okay, great. Where do you want to pin it? Or do you want to make a new board? My most recent board will be listed at the top. That's why you see it twice. So when I've got seven boards, my last board will show up first that I that I used last. I've only got two at the moment, so it looks like that. And then I can easily just click pin. But I have the ability to go back and edit the description. I can put in my own description. So if they had written a link to their website on their description, I can take it out and to some degree claim it for myself. I made that chili. 
in this particular case, though, I'm stymied by this from schema. They shared it in the way that we're about to do, which is the better way. They shared it from their website. Uh, let's see if I can find an example that did it wrong. I think there's too many smart people nowadays, so I might not find the wrong one. This one. Okay, for example, this one. I'm going to share this here. This one doesn't have the item that says uh, from X. If I edit that and put my own item and you know saying whatever uh, stevia flavor. By stevia in bulk, and then my web address. And I'm saying I'm sharing it to my board. It lets me. It lets me. All of these networks are very, uh, very open. In, in sharing this content. So see, now it's part of my board. So if someone were to visit my account, see my boards, has my address. Um, the better way to share is via pin from website. So we'll explore that. So this is the one I recommend. But any questions on this on this way to share uploading from your computer? Pinning from website assumes you've got some sort of landing page or some sort of end result, meaning you've got some sort of website, you've got uh, an eBay listing, you've got an Etsy shop, you've got some place where people can land from this pin. This one that I, this first one that I shared, I did put in a link there. But again, if someone reshares that, they can take out my link and put in their own description. I want something more added more permanently, so that's via this method. We'll click pin from website. And then here it's going to remind you again, if you get the pin it, the Pinterest browser button, this is a little faster. But now it's asking for a web address. As an example, I'm going to go over to my company's blog, and I'll just randomly choose an article. I'm going to choose an article and copy its link. Paste. So what Pinterest will do is it'll take an address, you click next, it'll then scan, it'll then analyze that screen, uh, that, that page, and it'll see, okay, we see that there are these images on that page. And it'll see perhaps these are also other uh, pictures on Pinterest from that website. Again, Pinterest is saving a lot of metadata. Pinterest is seeing uh, everything that's been posted about that particular image, all of the metadata, and it saw that it's coming from this website. So in this example, Pinterest knows, or Pinterest has a few of our items in their, in their service. But it, it's seeing two, two pictures, so I'll, I'll select, okay, this is the picture I want to share on Pinterest. It'll ask for a board and a description. And I'm simply going to say blogging tips. Again, this I'll say I'll create a board for it. 
uh, website advice. So obviously it does it very quickly, so be careful about that. And it's also saying you might also like these other things related to technology, see it now that some other kind of company it will go away. Again, I'll get back to what that means in a moment, but I shared something via that method of using it from my website. And when uh, someone sees it on Pinterest, they say pinned from in the originating location. And that cannot be edited. That cannot be removed. Anyone can edit that description, but the original attribution, um, that can't be removed. Plus, Pinterest makes that active an active link in that if I click there, it'll show everywhere on Pinterest, I mean everything on Pinterest from that originating address. So the more of your content that you share via your own website, more of your stuff will show up on Pinterest. People can find your website, your stuff, easier if you share more of your stuff to Pinterest. Here's a pro tip. I'll put it in my notes so when I give it to you at the end of the day you can have this. This address here Pinterest.com slash source slash your website. You can try it right now. If you have a website, put this address in with your website there. And Pinterest will say, this is everything we have on Pinterest from your website. And there, there may be stuff there that you don't even know is there because someone else might have shared it to Pinterest for you. That's great. I'm starting to build an audience on Pinterest without even knowing about it. So this is to see what Pinterest knows about your site. Obviously, replace your site with your site. So just for fun, let's see what it knows about this college. What's been shared from San Diego Continuing Education. So these are the things that Pinterest has, has seen attached to this website. Patricia Lund, Candace Johnson, Tessa Mashlow. So different different people pinning. This one and this one are the same one. It's got one right there. So content being shared. From a particular website, and as as we'll get to it later, like when we talked about Twitter, for example, connect with people or follow people based on your your topic. I'm seeing here, in theory, these people: Patricia, Tessa, Diego. These people, in theory, are interested in continuing education. Maybe I am. Let's say tangibly. Let's say I'm trying to get more students for my class next month. I could go here and I can look, I can go to Meg's profile, Hannah's profile, and I can reach out to them. I can send them a direct message. I can follow them. I can comment on their stuff. The point of that is to make them aware that I exist. So again, we'll, we'll do this more tangibly a little later, but I can reach out directly to people. These people seem to be interested on a topic. Let me let them know I exist by going to their pages and following or messaging them. But this is the more preferred way to, to share from a website. I need a web address so that it's tied to your domain. So that the link is immutable, so that you can't be you can't change it. The opposite way is on my website. If I have it set up 
on my website, from my website, I can have a pin button. That requires that you check on your website how to activate that. Uh, Pinterest used to give out code to do this, so did Facebook, but now they don't do that anymore because now it's more like up to you. How do you do this on your website? This is a WordPress website. On WordPress you can pretty easily activate this stuff. Whatever way you made your website, look it up. The way you made your website or whoever made your website for you, look up. Add the Pinterest ability to my website, please. Because this is the other way to do it, too. Any sort of graphic uh, that might be on, 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 on the website, uh, especially on, on, on blogs, this one here, you, you saw it right there, it has the pin button. If I do it this way from my website, I'm on my website, I'm logged in to Pinterest. It remembers I've logged in. And I clicked on pin here. And what it's doing is it's it saw, okay, this is what you're trying to share. And notice in this case, it took the description from the picture itself. This time I had to write it previously. But from my website, it took the description, which I can change and add to. I'm just simply, well, let me add a hashtag for fun, SEO. I'll add it to the website advice again. And this gets passed over from my website over to my Pinterest. If I had followers, they could see that. If people chose to follow that board, they could see it. They're simply impressions, but it's still up to you to create something here that will catch people's attention, to, for them to click the link, to go read the article, to go buy the product. And so you'll see, this was saved from PMD Interactive. Visit. It's built in. I didn't have to write it myself. And if someone shares this, they can't change that. That's where it came from. Not necessarily a blog, but a website. You need to have some online presence for this to work. Usually a blog. That's the preferred way nowadays. That's one of the techniques, one of the secrets of SEO. You, you should have a blog on your website just about for any kind of website. I teach a class on blogging. In that class we talk about brainstorming everyone's uh, business if they would like and we figure out things for, for you guys to write. But in short, everyone should have a blog because it's content for you to share and traffic to get. Pinterest is going to focus on some sort of picture. So if I'm over here on the about page, for example, that, that one does have a picture, but there's a there's a page somewhere here probably without a picture. If there's no picture here, Pinterest doesn't have anything to latch on to. So you can't quite share that, that, that screen. So you should have at least one picture on your page, and then you can share it to Pinterest, and then it'll work. So you see here, I, I, added a, I added a hashtag to this description. And what that does is that when you click there, it searches Pinterest for that keyword. So everyone's pins with this keyword show, show up. And depending on the popularity of the keyword, you may be drowned out because I might be visible by many more other people. I'm not exactly sure what algorithm this uses. I don't know if it's based on when it was shared or the number of extra interactions it has, or who shared it. Uh, so a hashtag is just a way to do a search. It's, it's a keyword attached to your pin that then shows you everyone else using that hashtag. Instead of using a hashtag that everyone's using, you could go the opposite way and make a hashtag of your own, such as bcbake99, and anything that has that would show up. The problem, of course, is about making your own hashtags is that you need to make them popular. 
you need to get other people to use them. If you're the only one using them, your stuff will show up. Great. But no one's thinking to search that hashtag. So if you make up a hashtag, I would recommend you use it on all the networks where it's where it's viable for you to use it. Use that same hashtag on Twitter, Pinterest, etc. Question. So I just googled inspirational song lyrics, and your one of the lists was Pinterest board with inspirational song lyrics, which took me to like a topic, and there's a lot of different things. How would I then save that whatever's come up as something that I'm following? Let me try it myself. Say the inspirational song lyrics. All right, so that's their explore. So how would you then make that something that just was one of the words you would follow automatically? I was trying to find a Pinterest um, button on something so I could try it out and make it more. I couldn't find one. You're right that I don't see a way to follow this topic. Um, let me just confirm over here. Humor. I remember seeing some of these that you can follow. Like right here, this says follow. This has gone to explore and follow. I think it's because this I don't know, maybe this is like a followable... See the address says explore, funny quotes, and this one does say follow, so I would, I would see all of these things here. This one doesn't say follow, and this one that we found through Google, it's explore inspirational song lyrics, so I, I don't know. I'm not sure why you can't follow that particular item. I'm sure there's some sort of nuance that we're missing, but if you can't follow, you can't follow. Sure, but that seems sort of like uh, kind of random because if I do explore cat videos, that seems to have worked. Okay, what about cat uh, toy videos? The point that I'm saying here is I might not find. Hmm. Well, it's still anyway doing a search up here. It's calling it explore, but searched. Can't so I'm searching the same thing, and this time it search shows the address as search rather than explore. Actually, if you click boards at the very end, it does take you to something you can follow. This. But these are going to be the individual boards, not the whole. Yeah, it gives you a way. Oh, I thought you meant like you wanted to follow the whole concept. This is going to be following individual people, which is still useful. Okay, the third way to share is we saw that when we're trying to pin from a website, it's going to say, why not get the Pinterest browser button? This is something that you can look at on your own, but this will then guide you to, to set this up. And what it'll do is it'll add a brand new icon to your browser. And then when you're on some website, you can click that icon and it'll start the process to share on Pinterest. I think it's going to depend on your browser. Google Chrome. I'm in Firefox. Um, if I'm on Google Chrome, then I'll get a brand new icon up here, and then I can go to my website. I'll have the icon on the top right corner, share on Pinterest, and then I can, I can click it. So, like we talked about on all the other networks, 
you should share some of your stuff early on so that you have something to show for it. Again, I would, if I was doing this for real, I would have to populate these three um, these three um, boards with at least four pins so that I don't have these holes here and this one that I haven't even started on. So mostly you'll be sharing your own content, but of course it's perfectly okay to share someone else's content. Uh, we talked previously that a good goal is 80-20. 80% your pins, 20% their pins. Someone else's pins. It's perfectly fine to see to search and find other people's pins and pin their stuff to your boards. Uh, that has some value in that as you start to build followers you build this engagement and you're sharing something for your followers to look at. But the negative of that of course is that uh, it's not your stuff. It's not linking back to your own website unless you remember to add your own link. And even if you add your own link it's still gonna have the original attribution back to their website. So you're giving them perhaps free traffic. But on the flip side you want this. You want your stuff to get shared. So when you share these pictures, this content, and someone shares it, your link will be attached to the pin, and that could get you traffic back to your own site. So we'll talk in just a moment about uh, again, uh, getting followers. Right now we're just doing basic groundwork, but any, any questions on what we've talked so far about sharing content? So let's say you have your, uh, your goal, and of course this applies to all the networks, but let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Share my own pin. Wednesday. Share someone else's. And then Wednesday and, and Friday. Share my own pin again. Let's say then Tuesday and Thursday, you're spending that time on building an audience. So follow accounts or boards. And Thursday, interact. And then if you want to work weekends, of course, you can fit that in. Let's say Monday through Friday, these are some ideas. Interact, so we'll go into these details about Tuesday, Thursday in just a moment. But interact, of course, is the replies, the likes, the shares. But here, here are some ideas, and yes, so you've got something to do every day. But this something could be accomplished in five minutes. You can spend five minutes every day, and you can, of course, mix this all up. Maybe every day, for five minutes, you will follow people, and then move on with my day. Because some amount of people that you follow will follow you back. All the networks are like that. But it's not a one-to-one -one relationship. You follow ten people today, and 10 people tomorrow, but that doesn't mean you're going to end up with 20 followers at the end of the week. You might end up with three. Three is still better than zero. The next week you follow five more and five more. You don't get 10 out of that. Maybe you get two. But then two, you know, five is better than three. So as more of these that you're building with these various tactics, more of an audience, a potential captive audience. Yes, uh, definitely. You could uh, mix all of this up or focus on one more than the other and then also do the, you know, paying for pin placement and all of that. So it's all negative to that at all. If you spam or anything, you can spam and join. 
for as many people as possible to be seen in the target and then the second thing is going to call you back. Well, think about it like this also. Let's say you did follow a hundred every day. Yeah. Um, are you, do you have a content for those people to see? Yeah. If you've just added five things to one board and you've got a hundred followers and you're going to follow a hundred more and a hundred more and a hundred more, you have nothing to show for it. And that's spammy, definitely. So you're going to mix the two. You're going to add content. That's why I'm mixing it up in this sort of editorial calendar. You're going to do some sharing and some following and some commenting to just be as broad as possible. Because yes, you will be very spammy if you only follow, if you only reply, if you only pin, if you don't mix it up. Yes? You went to a website and then you used the Pinterest button to mm -hmm. see that you can install it in the computer. Mm -hmm. And then you pulled a free picture from the bottom of the website. Exactly. What happens is sometimes, depending on the way the website is set up, uh, it may not quite work with that Pinterest button. It may not be smart enough to see, oh, there's seven pictures here and we only found two for some reason. That has to do with the way the website is set up. There are some websites perhaps that don't load the picture until you scroll. Um, so I can't, I can't say too much about it. It's what the website, how the website is set up that is allowing it to be shown on Pinterest. One possible way to force it is uh, I might be looking at, let's say here on, on the blog, on the blog, in theory, I'm seeing all of these pictures. For whatever reason, the Pinterest button gets confused and it doesn't see them all. You could go directly to this post and on that post try again to share from that post and that might wake it up and find the pictures you're trying to pin. Okay, so the sharing part. Uh, let's look at this one here. Share someone else's content. This is where it's going to tie us into either using the search box or the topics. We looked at topics a little bit. Let's look at search. So here's going to be keywords in my recent searches. So if uh, I'm looking for healthy cookies, I'm going to be searching keywords that what my company is about, my <coughs> Pinterest account is about. And depending what you search, your screen will look different, but you will see perhaps also suggestions at the top. Banana, oatmeal, no-bake cookies, low-calorie cookies. It's just showing you content. In theory, your own content could show, could show up here. But I'm seeing things like healthy three-ingredient ingredient cookies. And if it makes sense, and I see someone else's post, I could then um, click the pin it button like I showed a moment ago, change the description if I want. Some of it cannot be edited because it has that built-in attribution. Uh, and then choose a board to, to save it to. The purpose of this uh, is, is twofold in that I have some followers. I want to keep followers because I can build followers, but I want to keep followers, good followers, followers that will actually want to uh, buy my product. Um, so by sharing things on a regular basis, I will stay on people's minds. They will see Victor's Bakery shared another thing. Victor's Bakery shared another thing. I stay in their minds. And maybe I share something that resonates, that is interesting to them. Then they click um, They click my link, they go buy my product, they read my blog, whatever. They, become, uh, they go from simply being impressions to, to conversions eventually, perhaps. That's why I'm saying here, that'll be one of the things you're going to do. Maybe every Wednesday spend some time doing this. Five. I'm going to share five different things from people. 
two different things, 20 different things, whatever. You're going to share other people's things. One is to for new things for your followers. The other reason you do this is because now I shared this from um, from Listolic and Listolic got a um, got a notification that I pinned their pin. I shared their pin. The Stalic is aware that I exist. Just like Twitter, Facebook, all of that. I have to make others aware that I, that I exist if I'm not going to pay for it. I have to make others aware I exist. So here now the Stalic is aware. And as we talked about the other days, they can see that notification and move on with their lives. Or they can see who is this Victor's Bakery? Because they're going to see it up here. Who's Victor's Bakery? So they might then click to go to my profile. And if my profile has no biography, no link, no logo, no pins, half-made boards, why would they follow? But if then they come to my profile and they see a, a board that is complete, has an interesting topic and content, they may choose to follow my whole account or that one board. And either one is a victory. If they follow my whole account, they're going to see everything. Great. If they follow one of my boards, great. They're looking at what they want to look at. I'm building that captive audience. And so that's why you're going to, going to share other people's stuff once in a while. Maybe one of the days of the week, you're going to spend five minutes, ten minutes, whatever, sharing other people's stuff, if it makes sense. You're not simply going to click share, share, share for everything, pin, pin, pin for everything. You're going to select to pin things that make sense as your business, because in a sort of sense, you are uh, either uh, tarnishing or bolstering your brand by sharing other people's stuff. So from my cooking company, amazing food. Yeah, I could look in here and what's this amazing food about? Is there any baked good things here? Easy Frito taco pie. Um, that looks yummy. Roasted garlic ratatouille teriyaki chicken pineapple boats. Yeah, I'll share that. Now that originally came from BuzzFeed, so even this company itself is sharing stuff from other places. From Spicy Southern Kitchen, from Light Spice Jar, they're doing what I'm saying. It's not always original content. You can share other people's stuff because you've got to build that audience and keep that audience. And in between other people's stuff, I'm going to share my own stuff that hopefully gets reshared throughout Pinterest and my word gets spread out to more people. Well, yes, that's um, it's going to tell you itself right here with these stats. It's going to tell you this is a good one, 5,000 shares or likes. If I'm searching, the first step that I'm doing is like we did here, I searched. And I just randomly chose something. But I would, when I search, look at those stats, and I wouldn't live and die by them, but I would look at those stats that if there's not much activity on those, then it's probably not a very good thing to share. Either no one else has seen it or no one else has enjoyed it enough to interact. So a quick way to see what's valuable is look at those stats. 16,000 other pins. I'm piggybacking on that a bit. You can further follow through and say, okay, well, Amy's uh, Healthy Baking shared this. So I can go to Amy's Um, healthy baking account on Pinterest. And I can do more reconnaissance and see, okay, Amy's Healthy seems to be doing well. 108,000 followers. So it's just looking at the stats. That's what you're figuring out what's good. And also visually and what you think might work for people. Um, good photo, good topic, but the numbers also help out. Exactly. Um, 
pretty much every network that we talk about, a lot of its a lot of the concepts spill over to every other network. Check the retweets on Twitter. If you're going to retweet someone's tweet, check how many other retweets it has. That shows that it was effective for them. It could be effective for your audience. LinkedIn is maybe. And that can definitely be broken or skewed. You could be, this week, you can be doing 50-50. And next week, you could be doing 90-10. But the point of all of this as we're doing it is then we're going to keep an eye on our analytics, what's working. So it's Wednesday. I'm sharing other people's things. I'm searching keywords. Let's try another one here. Um, alternative baking methods. Cheesy spaghetti squash. Pizza bake. How to make homemade veggie chips. Better than fries. Cut potatoes almost all the way through. Drizzle with olive oil, sea salt. All right, so I'm seeing all of this stuff, and then again, I'm choosing to. Um, to pin it. I think they used to call it repin, so I keep saying it that way. But sharing other people's stuff. Uh, I'm taking whatever they shared over to mine, and that's not bad, of course. That's built into the core of all of these networks. On the flip side, I want that. So that's why, more often perhaps, I'm going to be sharing my stuff. My stuff on Mondays and, and Fridays. I'm going to share two or three things on Monday or Friday. Yeah, it's a lot of time, a lot of work. Make it as flexible as you want. This one week, on Tuesday, I'm going to share one thing. Perfect. Good enough. The more you do it, the better. Because this is a full-time job. Social media marketer is a full-time job. And you're probably running your own business, and you're running the payroll, and you're, now you've got to do on Pinterest, and Twitter, and LinkedIn, and YouTube. Yes. But the more you're active on these things, the more potential audience you build. And really, once you learn some concept on one network, you can apply it to various degrees on every other network. But the way you get good on a network is you spend time on that network. See what they're doing. I don't see these kinds of pictures very often on Twitter. I don't see you know, this kind of graphic. Obviously, this is a lot of work for me to create. I need some Photoshop skills for that. This is very creative. I can do that. I can take you know, different, let's say I'm selling car parts. I have an auto shop. I could arrange my car parts in an interesting looking way like that. It's just needed the inspiration for me to put it all together, stand above the products and take a photo and then share it. Write something interesting. Don't forget my link. That's a link back to my auto shop. Request a free quote. Use the coupon code Pinterest199. Let's take our next break, and then when we come back, we will then look at these ideas about the Tuesdays and Thursdays, about the following and the interactions. It's uh, 8.36. Uh, we'll be back at 8.46, and we'll learn some more.